Welcome to the Ohio Department of Education's webinar for the Early Childhood Education Grant. This webinar will provide valuable information for Early Childhood Education grantees regarding program updates and reminders for fiscal year 2020. The purpose of the Early Childhood Education Grant is to maximize a child's early educational experiences before kindergarten and provide high quality early learning services to eligible children. Preschool programs funded through this state grant are comprehensive and designed to meet the needs of eligible children. Grant funds advance a high quality educational program for preschool and promote academic achievement using developmentally appropriate practices. Again, this budget cycle, funding for the Early Childhood Education Grant in fiscal year 2020 is $68 million in state general revenue funds and $5 million in casino settlement funds. Funding for the Early Childhood Education Grant provides programming for 17,913 children in fiscal year 20 at $4,000 per child per slot. The presenters on this webinar include Aaron Bagley and Amy Parker, Program Specialists in the Office of Early Learning and School Readiness. This webinar will cover general updates and reminders eligibility reminders for families and children participating in the Early Childhood Education Grant, timelines for required program and fiscal documentation to be completed, reminders regarding reporting requirements for child data fiscal reminders, including budget revisions, and finally, information on how to find resources that will support you in the successful implementation of the Early Childhood Education Grant. All programs that are highly rated and step up to quality must comply with the program standard requirements and maintain a three, four, or five star rating for the entire grant award period. In fiscal year 20, early childhood education funded programs may serve children eligible for publicly funded child care to extend the day beyond the 12 and a half hour weekly requirement. Please note that no other funding source is permitted to be used to fund the same hours for which the child is receiving early childhood education funds. This includes PFCC and Head Start. Please see our grantee manual for requirements regarding eligibility for preschool special education funded children. Here are a few other general program reminders. Be sure to provide and document a minimum of 12 and a half hours of service per week for the minimum school year as defined in Ohio Revised Code 3313.48, which is 455 hours. The program should develop a written schedule that details start-stop dates and the specific 12 and a half hours per week funded by the ECE grant. A program may arrange to serve children through AM, PM, or full day, part day options, as long as 12 and a half hours per week is provided. Nap time cannot be included in the 12 and a half hours. We also wanted to highlight a new requirement this year. Programs must operate the ECE grant for a minimum of six months during the fiscal year. Attendance records must be maintained and available for review by the department upon request. The program must consistently apply its own attendance policy to grant funded children regarding withdrawal for non-attendance. If a student is absent for events such as a family vacation or illness, the hours do not need to be made up by the provider. Likewise, if a child enrolls after the program year begins, those hours prior to enrollment are not required to be made up by the program. No children can be enrolled after the April 2020 enrollment survey deadline unless they are filling a slot vacated by a child previously enrolled. Exceptions to this include an eligible child with an IEP, an eligible child with a case plan or family service plan as designed in ORC 2151.412, or a child placed in kinship care as documented through Kinship Permanency Incentive Program payments. Eligible child whose family is experiencing homelessness as defined by the McKinney-Vento Act. If a program closes due to a calamity day or other unforeseen emergency condition and it causes the program to fall below the minimum number of required annual hours, the hours must be made up. If this unforeseen condition causes a hardship, the program should contact their education program specialist to discuss the possibility of applying for a waiver. If a provider is not able to meet the minimum of four and a half of 12 and a half hours of service per week, they must have a department approved waiver for an alternative schedule. A waiver may be granted under the following circumstances. For any provider which the 12 and a half hours per week schedule creates a hardship or for any provider who shows evidence they are working in collaboration with a preschool special education program. If the department approves a waiver for an alternate schedule that provides services for less time than the standard early childhood education schedule, 
the department may reduce the provider's annual allocation proportionately. Under no circumstances shall an annual allocation be increased because of the approval of an alternate schedule. If the program is closed due to parent-teacher conferences, up to two program days of that time can be included twice per year. If the program is closed due to professional development for teachers, up to two program days of that time can be included twice per year. For example, if a normal program day for ECE includes two and a half hours of time and is closed for a day for parent-teacher conferences, then two, that two and a half hours can be included in the required 455 hours. Child eligibility. A child must be a resident of the state of Ohio. However, the child is not required to live in the district of the program. Beyond this, there are two eligibility requirements that must be met in order for a child to be enrolled in the Early Childhood Education Grant. The first is age eligibility. Programs are required to determine that children served are eligible to participate by obtaining official documentation of the age of the child. Children must be four years of age as of October 1, 2019. Children who are age eligible to attend kindergarten in their district of residence are not eligible to fill a grant slot, even if they are on an individual education plan. If a program serves a three-year-old child one year through the three-year-old waiver, then that child is automatically age eligible the following year, even if they are not yet four by the age eligibility date. A child with an individualized education program is eligible to be funded using the Early Childhood Education Grant as of his or her fourth birthday and should be counted as a four-year-old student for purposes of reporting. The other eligibility criteria is income eligibility. The funds are required to be used to provide preschool services to economically disadvantaged children whose family income falls at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. With the exception of children with disabilities, and children with a case plan or family service plan, as defined in ORC 2151.412, or a child placed in kinship care, as documented through the Kinship Permanency Incentive Program payments. It is the responsibility of the program to determine the federal poverty level, based on the documentation provided by the family. Documentation of income eligibility must be kept on file for review by the department. If a family is currently receiving publicly funded child care, and the program has a notification of eligibility letter that indicates the family copayment is zero dollars, the program does not need to collect documentation of income for the family. A copay of the zero dollar notification eligibility letter may be used in lieu of other income documentation and must be kept on file at the program along with the JFS 01121. Be reminded of the guidelines for reporting self-employment income in our grantee manual. Required eligibility documentation. For the purposes of reporting data, a child is only considered eligible when required documentation is on file. C programs must use the Common Application Eligibility Screening Tool developed by the Ohio Department of Education and the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. The tool must be maintained by the program and available for review by the department. All Early Childhood Education grantees are required to complete the JFS 01121 Early Childhood Education Eligibility Screening Tool in its entirety for the Early Childhood Education funded children. Programs must provide the form to families interested in enrolling their child in Early Childhood Education. The family must complete and return all pages of the form. The program must keep a copy of the form on file at the program. Do not submit the form to the Ohio Department of Education unless requested. If the family is not currently receiving publicly funded child care and is interested in applying, provide the family with a copy of the completed JFS 01121 form and also provide the family with a copy of the JFS 01122 publicly funded child care supplemental application and direct them to submit the required documentation to the County Department of Job and Family Services. For the purposes of determining family income and family size, a family is defined as all parents or legal guardians of the child residing in the home and all minor children of the parent or legal guardian who are residing in the home, a step parent residing in the home, and all the minor children who reside in the home, the grandparents of the child residing in the home, but only if the parent of the child is a minor and is residing in the home and not participating in the LEAP program unmarried parents of a common child who reside in the same home and all of the minor children who live with them, 
and a foster parent and all of the minor children who reside in the home. Income of the family includes gross earned and unearned income and should be used for the purpose of determining income eligibility of families. See the grantee manual for examples of which reported income should be counted. Documentation of earned and unearned income must be kept on file by the grantee. A 1040 annual tax report, two consecutive pay stubs, tax records, business records, award letters, child support, a letter from an employer, or other type of income verification is needed to document income eligibility. The grantee must keep a copy of the actual documentation on file at the program. Children with an individualized education program and children with a case plan or family service plan, as defined in ORC 2151.412, or children placed in kinship care, as documented through kinship permanency incentive program payments, attend the program at no cost to the family, regardless of family income level. It is not necessary for the families of these children to provide income on page 3 of JFS 01121. A copy of the IEP, a court order, or kinship permanency incentive program payments will suffice. The remaining information on JFS 01121 must be completed, including the signature on page 3. If a family has no earned income, they must provide documentation to explain how they are meeting basic living expenses, including but not limited to food, housing, utilities, and transportation. Examples of acceptable documentation to support the unearned income include a housing voucher, food stamps, or other public assistance, or letters verifying cash gifts. A zero income statement signed by the parent guardian can also be used. The statement must include a detailed written description of how the parent is meeting basic living expenses, including food, housing, utilities, and transportation. A sample zero income statement that meets this requirement can be found in our grantee manual and on our website. Income eligibility must be redetermined on an annual basis at either the time of enrollment or the beginning of the program year, no earlier than February 1st for the following year. Verification of age must be kept on file by the grantee. The actual birth certificate must be obtained within 30 days of enrollment and retained in the student's file for review by the department and for entry in the EAS program for applicable programs. If the child's birth certificate is not in English, a notarized translation, passport, or residency card can be used instead. Children from families whose income is at or below 100% of the federal poverty level attend tuition-free and may not be charged tuition or program fees such as registration, snack, or materials fees. Fees collected prior to identification of eligibility must be refunded. Children from families whose income is between 101 and 200 percent of the federal poverty level may attend on a prorated tuition basis. The amount must be less than the private pay tuition rate. The program must have a written sliding fee scale outlining tuition rates based on poverty level and private pay rates. The sliding fee scale policy must be shared with families at the time of enrollment. Programs can elect not to charge tuition to ECE-funded children between 101 and 200% of the federal poverty level. However, this must be reflected on the sliding fee scale. The sliding fee scale must be applied consistently to all families enrolled who are receiving ECE funding. Families who are receiving publicly funded child care to provide extended day services and who have a required co-payment can have the ECE sliding failed tuition payment waived, provided it is part of their written policy of the program and is applied consistently to all families receiving PFCC. We'd like to review some timelines that must be met throughout the year to assure your program stays on track for meeting compliance requirements. Some of the items you should work on over the summer include finalizing your calendar, which details start and stop dates and the specific 12 and a half hours per week of the ECE grant education to total 455 hours for the year. This must be shared with families at enrollment via either parent handbook, enrollment packet, or posting. Review and adjust the sliding fee scale policy for the year as needed. This also must be shared with families at enrollment via either parent handbook, enrollment packet, or posting. Review teacher PD records to ensure that ELA training has been completed prior to the August 15th through November 14th fall window for teachers making scoring decisions and complete your CCIP funding application prior to incurring expenses. Now let's look at some fall deadlines. By September 30th, you should submit your final expenditure report for the previous year. 
This is also the date that the EAS system users need to have their provider application submitted. By October 1st, the program should have all slots filled with student files complete and required documentation on file. For programs that don't have all of their slots filled, October 1st is also the date that applications will begin to be accepted to serve three-year-old children. The deadline to submit the application is October 15th. By October 31st, all EAS users should have student applications submitted for all enrolled children. Any children that are enrolled after October 31st should have applications submitted in EAS or within 30 days of their enrollment. Now let's review the winter deadlines. All grantees will be required to report on the number of ECE-funded children currently enrolled in the program. The information will be used to determine if unfilled slots should be reallocated to programs with the capacity to serve more children, in order to assure all available slots are used. It is expected that all slots are filled no later than December 1st. Programs will receive their enrollment survey in early December, and it should be submitted by the deadline announced in the survey notification. Beginning February 1st, programs can begin collecting income documentation for the next year's enrollment. The spring deadline income the following. All grantees will be required to complete a survey that in includes health information on the program sliding fee tuition scale, health and developmental screenings completed, and referrals made as a result of the screening. Respond to the April enrollment survey and indicate your intent to participate in the Early Childhood Education Grant for fiscal year 21. The last day to enroll new children is the same date as the deadline to complete the April enrollment survey. There are a few exceptions to this requirement and these include enrolling children who have an individualized education plan and those who are in protective custody. June 30th is the last day of the fiscal year. Programs will not be reimbursed for any expenses that occur after that date. June 30th is also the date that all applications and early learning assessment scores are required to be entered into the EIS system. Recipients of the Early Childhood Education Grant are required to submit a project budget which outlines how the funds will be spent. A completed project budget must be submitted to, reviewed by, and approved by the program office prior to conducting any grant activities. Spending outside of the approved budget categories by more than 10% requires a budget revision. Spending outside of the approved budget categories in governance and administration and indirect costs is not allowable. Any revisions in the approved budget amounts must be requested in a proposed revised budget and electronically submitted through the CCIP prior to obligating costs different from the approved amounts. The department does not recognize verbal approvals or bu of budgets or budget revisions. A budget revision is necessary if any cost to a given category increases or decreases by 10% or more after the budget has been approved. Revisions must be electronically submitted through the CCIP and can be submitted at any time throughout the year. The budget revision must include a narrative description in the history log of the CCIP justifying the change. Budget revisions must be completed when the activity is contemplated, prior to obligating funds. A new substantially approved date is established for the newly budgeted categories. The amendment is effective on the day it is received by ODE in substantially approvable form. All amendments are subject to negotiation and approval by ODE. ODE does not guarantee that the requested revisions will be approved. Expenses incurred prior to the budget revision are not reimbursable. All grants are subject to state audits, reviews, and department monitoring. Please note that the funds are released incrementally throughout the year and the total allocation will not be available until sometime in April. Next, we'd like to share some budget information. Programs must maintain fiscal control and accounting procedures to ensure the accurate accounting for and proper disbursement of funds. Funds are based on a per child allocation of $4,000 and must be drawn down based on the maximum number of ECE funded children enrolled in the program at any one time. Expenses will be charged to the grant based on the number of early childhood education grant funded children who benefit from the expense versus the total number of children who benefit from the expense. 
This is necessary to ensure that the Early Childhood Education Grant is only charged its fair share of expenditures. Funding must be accountable for on a consistent basis, in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, and properly documented. Expenditures must be necessary, reasonable, and applicable to the grant. Expenditures, expenditures must be allowable and must comply with grant requirements as well as other applicable federal and state laws and regulations. A reminder to all programs, you are only permitted to draw down funds for the amount of children that are actually served in the program. We have provided an example to help illustrate this. Programs must report student, teacher, and program information as required by the Ohio Department of Education using the data systems established by the department. Programs must ensure all appropriate staff members register for and gain access to information systems as required by the department. There are two systems used by the Ohio Department of Education to report data for the Early Childhood Education Grant. Those grantees that are licensed by the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services as well as chartered non-public schools use the Enterprise Application System or EAS. The remaining grantees, including public school districts, educational service centers, joint vocation schools, Department of Developmental Disabilities programs, and community schools, use EMIS to report their program data. The Early Childhood Education Grant Data Systems Access Guide is available on the webpage and provides step-by-step -step instructions to access all Department of Education data systems. A few reminders for those grantees who use the Enterprise Application System. Student applications should be entered into EAS by October 30th. Be reminded that a birth certificate must be uploaded for each child. The birth certificate is used to verify accurate information has been entered in order to assign each child a unique student identification number. Children who are enrolled after October 30th should have the application entered into EAS within 30 days following enrollment. EAS student applications enrollments in date must be entered when a child withdraws. Student attendance data must be entered monthly. The attendance hours should only include the ECE hours attended and not any additional hours that the child is present through other funding sources. The early learning assessment scores can be entered at any point throughout the year for EAS users. Both fall and spring assessment scores are required to be entered by June 30th. Programs who use EMIS for data reporting purposes should keep in mind the following information. Student data collection windows take place three times a year, at the beginning, middle, and end of the school year. This year, we will again be running Gen Issues checks throughout the year. The purpose of these is to assure that programs are not over or under reporting the numbers of early childhood education funded children they are serving. The department will use the self-reported numbers that programs submit as part of their December and April enrollment surveys to compare against the numbers reported in EMIS. It is recognized that a program may have slightly more children reported than they have slots for because a child may fill a slot vacated by a child who was disenrolled from the program. Please also be reminded that only children who are receiving services with the Early Childhood Education Grant should be reported in EMIS with an e-code. It is the responsibility of the grantee receiving the funding to report child level data, even if they have contracted with another program to provide the direct services. For example, if a school district is the ECE grantee and they contract with an educational service center to provide preschool, it is the responsibility of the school district, not the ESC, to report the child level data. The program coordinator should work closely with the EMIS coordinator to assure correct reporting. If you are serving preschool children who are not receiving ECE funding and you are not sure how, what or how the received code you should, what received code you should use, please consult your ITC. If you are a program that is contract, contracted with another entity, you may have to work with the EMIS coordinator of the funded entity to assure you have correct data reported. Programs who report their data using EMIS should also be aware of the following information regarding the early learning assessment. There are two assessment windows for teachers to collect scores for children. 
the fall window runs from August 15th through November 14th, and the spring window runs from February 15th through May 14th. The Early Learning Assessment staff will share the reporting windows with programs via email, as well as posting the information on the Early Learning Assessment webpage. EMIS will generate a missing children report for any child who is reported with an E how received code and does not have an ELA score reported. Please be sure to refer to the reason codes document to report issues with individual student scores. There are several resources available to you on the administrator page of the Early Childhood Education Grants webpage. The general resources section includes the grantee manual, which provides an overview of all requirements for the grant, including both program and fiscal information. The fiscal resources section provides tutorial videos and documents for how to use the CCIP system, including project cash requests and final expenditure report instructions. The EAS resources are for those pro programs using the Enterprise Application Resources System for program and child data reporting. The ECE forms section includes both prescribed and sample forms that will assist programs in meeting program requirements. And finally, the contact information for the program specialists assigned to your county are available on the bottom left portion of the page. If your program needs to make changes to either or program, either program or fiscal, contact information, including name, position, email, or phone number, or if you would like to submit a request to move your slot distribution among your program's approved locations, or if you would like to request approval to serve children at a new site location, you will need to complete and submit the site location reporting form. The form is located on the administrator page of the Early Childhood Education Grants and it is the first form in the ECE forms list. In order to submit the form, you will need to complete a, a budget revision in CCIP, upload the new document, and then include a note that identifies the requested change. Make sure you sign up to have an email, uh, any email updates sent directly to you. You can manage your subscription preferences by clicking on the Sign Up for Alerts link at the bottom of the ODE webpage and make sure you check the Early Childhood Education Grants page frequently. Each county and area of the state has an assigned specialist that is available to answer any questions you have and provide technical assistance. The pink shaded area is assigned to Amy Parker and the green shaded area is assigned to Erin Bagley. This map and contact information can also be found on the Early Childhood Education Grants webpage on the Department of Education website. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it helpful and that it answered any questions you may have had. Please remember to visit our webpage for many more additional resources.